everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is The May Reads. I have read 11, yes, 11 books this month. I will try and be quick and talk quickly whilst I tell you all about them. I'm going to try and do an order. The reason I've read this many books is because I went on holiday, which allowed me to read six books in five days, which was perfect, which was amazing, because it brought me back to back on day, on track to my challenge, which is 104 books a year two books a week. I have read 42 books so far in 2019. I am happy with that. So I'm going to try and share them with you in order. We're going to start with Tales from a Haunted Mansion Volume 1 The Fearsome Foursome. This is a Disney one. I don't actually know who it's by but I'm sure you'd be able to find it on Amazon for it. I will give this a 5 out of 5. I absolutely loved it. It's all about four school kids call, and they create a group called the fierce and foursome and they just get together and discuss ghost stories and make up their own ghost stories they get invited to go to an old mansion there which is they do and then this creepy guy tells them these stories however there's a twist each story is related to each person so you've got tim who's all about baseball you've got willa which is about her dead pets you've got noah which is about a swimming pool and steve which is being about, which is about coffins and being buried there is a twist at the end of this book though, which I'm not going to tell you. You need to read that to find out what happens. But it is a really good book and I really enjoyed it. And like I said, it says volume one. So I really hope there is a second one that comes out. This was published in 2019. So fingers crossed they published another one because I absolutely love this book. The next one that I read was one I got from a charity shop and I didn't actually pay attention to it when I brought it. I just thought, oh, look, it's got, it looks cool cover. But actually it's called Beauty from Robin McKinley and it's a retelling of the story of Beauty and the Beast. Again, I give this a five out of five. I absolutely love this book. It's just a twist. So it, instead of being like Beauty and the Beast with Belle and that, it's set kind of like in the olden times that girl Beauty, her actual name is Honor, but they nicknamed her Beauty and she's never lived up to it. She's quite an, uh, she was more like plain slash ugly than pretty. And she basically becomes, they have to, her family becomes poor, they have to move and then she gets, she goes to the Beast and she then falls in love with them. Based on the Beauty and the Beast story, but she grows pretty and then one day she realizes that she is pretty. And it is a really enjoyable book and I really do recommend it. I absolutely loved it. I think this may have been my favourite one I read out of all the books I've read this month. I really did enjoy this one. And the fact that I didn't even realise it was Beauty and the Beast was just a plus because I was completely surprised once I got to it. So that was that one. Okay, the next one I read is another one from the Darren Shan collection. I'm going to be mentioning this one quite a bit because I finished the books I had. I now need to purchase the next ones. But this is book five, Trials of Death. So Darren is at the vampire mountain and he needs to carry out trials to prove that he is worthy to be a vampire. He had to do the first trial which was to do with a water maze and he succeeded. The second trial was to do with a cave and stagnites and again he um, succeeded. The third one, yeah that's three fingers, the third one was all to do with fire, he succeeded. However the fourth one was to do with fours, with boars, he had to kill two boars and he failed that one because he failed it, it meant death. However, he didn't want to die and another one didn't, and like one of the vampire princes to be didn't want him to be killed, so he helped him to escape. But whilst escaping, down came across the vampire knees. These are the crazy vampire knees, like people, the different version of the vampires. And he go, tries to get back to the vampire mountain to warn them of the situation that's about to happen. That there are vampires inside their mountain. They could be attacked. This book was enjoyable. I do think, though, it's very predictable because obviously you knew he weren't going to die because there's a whole there's 12 books of this all together. So you knew he weren't going to die. So I'm going to give this one probably a 3 out of 5. I do recommend Read Em Down Shine books. So if you enjoy vampires and if you enjoy like children books because they're really easy to read and, read and they are enjoyable. So it's Darren Shine, The Trials of Death. Okay, and then continuing with the Darren Shine ones, I then read book 6, which is The Vampire Prince. Um, he, he, escaped, get, he ends up living with wolves for a little while to heal because he'd obviously escaped the Japanese and were like in a lot of pain. He gets back to the vampire mountain, he tells the vampires what's going to happen and they're like oh my god they're going to sort it out and then there's going to be like a war. So there's a big ba battle and they use a spiders, you know in the first book I mentioned how they like control spiders a bit. They use the spiders to freak out the Vampanese, they kill them and then woo the Vampanese are gone from the mountains. They succeeded. However there will still be issue with the fact that because Darren failed the trials and then tried to escape. Um, 
he should be brought to death. However, they don't want him to die. No, none of the vampires want him to die, but it's tradition, it's a law. So they try to change up a bit, and in the end, they make Darren a prince. So that way, they do not have to kill him, because it's against the law to kill a prince, and a prince is allowed to fail their trial. So they kind of like vote it, it's really weird, and I don't know, I won't, no bothered with this one i think this one's probably like 2.5 out of 5 just because it seemed a bit weird i kind of felt like they should have killed him <laughs> it sounds bad but i was like what was their law they've literally just changed their law and made a kid a prince just so they didn't kill him so i don't know yeah it was an eh kind of one so the next one i read was the book you by caroline kepin kepnes kepnes i don't know how to spell it so um I really wanted to read this. I was obsessed, and I mean obsessed, with the Netflix TV show. I cannot wait for season two to come out. I was obsessed with it, and the book is just like it. It's so addictive. It's all about a guy called Joe who works at a bookshop, um, and this girl called Guinevere Beck walks into the store, and Joe becomes obsessed with her. And I mean obsessed. He, like, stalks her. He watches her outside of her bedroom windows. Like, don't get me wrong, Beck is a bit messed up, and you will understand what I mean if you read the book or even watch TV series. Beck is a very messed up character. However, Joe becomes obsessed with her. He kills for her because he thinks he's making her life better just by, like, by removing the negative from her. And then, in the end, he kills her because she doesn't want to be with him. She finds out that he's crazy and stalker and goes a bit crazy, so he locks her up and then kills her and then has to bury her, and then, oh my god, at the end of this one, another girl walks in, and he's like, oh, I like her, so it's basically, like, a new girl to be obsessed with, and I'm guessing that's what the next one is, but it even says here, the chilling not new novel coming soon, so I can't wait for the next one, because I really enjoyed it, I recommend this, and I recommend the TV series, which is on Netflix, it's called You, and i probably give this a 4.5 out of 5, I really enjoyed this one. Okay, so then, these are all the ones that I read on holiday. Um, we've got Darren Chan, Hunters of the Dust, Vampires at War, book 7. Um, I can't really remember what happened to this one. The weird guy, Mr. Tiny, comes to the Vampire Mountain and says that there's three hunters that can kill the Vampire's Lord, and they only have four chances. If they fail all four chances, only one of the three hunters will survive. Obviously, Two of the hunters is Mr. Cripsley and Darren, and then the other one they meet great later on. Um, they try one of the attempts they failed because the other vampire prince that joins them, I've forgotten his name, he realizes that his brother is assisting the vampire's laws and the vampire's lord and is protecting him, and he can't kill his brother, so he lets him get away, so he fails. So they've only got three more attempts now to kill this lord and yeah i have i had a theory by this point i was like i'm convinced that the vampire ne vampire a lord is steve who's from the first one who was darren's best friend and then got annoyed because he got called told he was evil i was convinced that and you'll find out why i was kind of right but kind of wrong so that's that one um rating three out of five i think that was one of the better ones i read okay the next one i read was i have so many bits of paper was Breakfast at Tiffany's from Truman Capote. Um, I enjoyed this one. This isn't just the book for Breakfast at Tiffany's. It has got little stories in it as well. What happens is it's about the guy, it's a writer, writes about Holly and her life and what how he feels when he met her and everything. Holly basically lies about her life a lot. She's completely a different person. She isn't what she is, but she makes herself to be really like fancy and like play girl and popular but her life isn't exactly what she says she lies a lot she goes to prison each week to meet this guy called sally who's like a drug dealer and she gives him the weather report she just does it because she gets paid but it turns out actually the it was all to do with drugs and she was helping like drugs to go through prison and him to run his business still so they try to arrest her but then she runs away and it's just basically what's going on with her and the guys Rona was in love with her and he just hopes that she had a good life and then there were little stories at the back so there's one called Christmas Memory which is about some pe two people that are poor and then the person dies at the end which is really like cute and it's a really cute story um you've also got a diamond guitar which is about a guy in prison who then another guy comes in with a shiny guitar and he lies a lot and tries to escape and he was going to escape with the other guy but the other guy was too old and couldn't escape and then he keeps the diamond guitar and it's just about how this guy with the diamond guitar changes the other one's life 
Then there was the other one which is about House of Flowers, which is about a girl that basically works in a brothel who then goes to get married and they're all like, her life isn't brilliant but she's happy so the love conquers all kind of thing. But it's a really good book, I absolutely love the film Breakfast at Tiffany's which is why I wanted to read this book and I do recommend it as a good classic. Um, I would say this is probably a 4 out of 5. It is a good book, it's an enjoyable, it's a nice easy read, I recommend it. Wow, I'm already like, like 11 minutes in. Okay, the next one was the last one of the Darren Shan books I have which is book 8. Alleys of the Night. So they return to Mr. Crepley's town where he grew up. Debbie is there, who was Darren's girl first girlfriend. She is now a teacher, and Darren has been enrolled in that school. They don't know why. It's kind of like what's going on, and you'll find out later on why. And then, hey, his friend Steve turns up and says, like, he's a hunter and he's trying to kill the Vampanese, has given up his grudge on Darren, and Darren believes him. And then there's a twist where it turns out, actually, Steve is a half Vampanese. He isn't the Lord. Law, though, Lord. He isn't the Vampanese Lord. He is just a half Vampanese. And also, RW, one of the weird characters from, like, book two or three, appears as well and was also a Vampanese. And he's called, like, Hookman now. It's really weird. I. If you, this was probably one of my favourite ones out of the eight Darren Chan books that I read. It's enjoyable, it keeps you like, thinking what's going on. And I recommend it. Like I said, I do really recommend the Darren Chan series. And I now need to buy book 9, 10, 11, 12 so I can finish it. So this one I'd probably give a 4 out of 5. Possibly 3.5 out of 5. It is a good book. Okay. Ah, all my things are falling off. So the next one is... The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, and it's by Mark Hayden. And oh my god, this book I can't believe it's taken me this long to read it. So, it's all about it's, it's, this is written by a boy called Chris who's autistic. And it begins, it starts off the very first like pages about this dog. He finds this dog instead, and he decides he wants to be a detective, he wants to know what's going to happen. And there's so many twists in this. At first his mum is dead and then later on he finds that actually his mum's alive, his dad just lied to him because his mum was having an affair with the neighbour's husband whose dog got killed. And then it turns out that the dad killed the dog because he got angry and then dad, the little boy Chris runs away and he goes to the train station, he goes to his mum to live with his mum and basically the dad then tries to make up for it, he wants to like make Darren, Darren, I keep thinking about the other one, make Chris trust him again so he so it slowly tries to develop trust, and all he did was for Chris, he cares about Chris a lot and loves him and you can see that clearly in the book and in the end he buys Chris a dog to make up for it and then Chris kind of like slowly comes but this is amazing, it gives you an idea of what an autistic child may think and honestly I could not put this book down, I, I loved it, I think that like, this is one I read in like a day I, it was amazing, I do recommend it if you haven't read it, this is 5 out of 5 like this book is amazing, I love it Okay, the next one that I read was Kisses of Death by Malcolm Rose. Again, this is a kind of like a teenager's book. So basically it's about Kim and Wes, Wes and Seth. Seth and Kim are twins and then Wes is their friend. They go to a trip to the village of Iam and Kim and Wes steal a lot. They steal money from a the fountain, they steal this thing that found them from him and then they end up getting this weird kiss and a dream and it turns out they've got the black plague and it's all because they stole this piece of steel from the village and then Steph has to try and rescue them he works it out he puts pieces together he returns the steel like message love message to the well and then they heal however they also had gone to a roman like village kind of thing like school museum and kim had stolen a purse from the romans and she didn't believe it and then at the end there is a dramatic twist all to do with the other curse and I'm not going to tell you what dramatic twist is but it's something that I was like what I I wasn't expecting it at all it was definitely a good twist and the way it ended was just like it spilled from Kim's pocket and he remembered the awful words of the spell he who wears another cloak cloak will be crushed to a rotting corpse and that's just how it ends it's a good book it's an enjoyable book so I do recommend it I think I give this one Probably a 3 out of 5, it was an easy read and yeah. And then the last one I read, which I was obsessed with, it's called 
A Summer at Sea by Katie Ford. Again, I got this from the charity shop. So it's all about a girl called Emily. She is a midwife and there's loads of issues going on at the hospital she works at the moment because she likes to be at her home birth. She prefers her at home birth. And then her friend, Beck, is pregnant and works on a puffer boat and she asks her friend Emily to come and cook for the summer, which Emily does. Emily enjoys the cooking and she ends up meeting the doctor who is Becca's husband's brother, so it's Becca's brother-in-law, um, Alistair, Alistair, Alistair I think it was, and she falls in love basically. Alistair's got a daughter called Kate, and she gets along with a daughter as well, they have little adventures, and it's just a perfect little romance. Emily then goes back home and then realises that she loves Alistair. Alistair, oh, Alistair, whatever his name is, and then he works out a way for her to get a job on the island in Scotland, and basically she goes back and they live happily ever after, like literally the ending is just sweet as, um, where is it? So you know, I think whatever happens about the job, having a baby or a puppy or all three, it will all work out for the best. You, me and Kate, we're a team and we'll win whatever happens. Then she pulled his head down to hers and kissed him. <gasps> It is like a perfect romance novel. I love romance, like books, I love this sort of stuff. However, they always make me sad afterwards. I'm too much of a fantasy girl. I'm too much of one for the th things where your life should be like books. So when I read like a, re a book romance, I'm then like obsessed and I want my own romance life to be like that. However, re I have to always remind myself, reality is never like the books that you read as much as I want it to be I am a proper romance girl I love romance novels and I really love this book and I did not want to put it out I literally wanted to take it to the dinner meal with me even a meal with me to read it because I just wanted to finish it and I did this one I read in one day as well I loved it this I give a 5 out of 5 so I do recommend it anyway I have talked for way too long we're up to like 16 minutes now and I want to be quick and I am trying my hardest to talk quick as well so I found there with Megan as being a short video but thank you for watching if you forgot any books that you recommend let me know in the comments below I read all sorts of books as you can tell um I don't know what I haven't even thought about what I'm gonna start reading for June I've got a whole load to read and I'm excited to get into them but there won't be as many books next month I promise you that anyway thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe to my channel I put videos twice a week Wednesdays and Sundays and that is everything I hope you enjoyed the video sorry that I talked too much hopefully you understood me with how quick I was talking I tried to talk quick to try and make it shorter but obviously I found that anyway thanks for watching and I hope you have a great morning afternoon evening whatever the time it is I hope you're smiling because that's the most important thing and I'll see you next video bye